Uh, this is, I believe, number 16, which is uh, interesting because I've basically recorded a video every time I've came out here to work on this project. Uh, there's been a few times where I've came out here to work on something and I did not film. Um, but it was basically little stupid stuff. The past two videos I've posted, I've said that the plan has changed because I work out here, I record, and then it might be like a day from when I edit the video to when I upload it. So things have changed. But uh, I'll get more into that in a little bit. But right now, I still need to cut out the templates that I made for the metal. I need to cut them out. This is where the A arms going to be, or the control arms on each side, so they need to clear before I do anything else. Um, after I do that, then I'll discuss what's changed on my plans for the front end. Almost. Mm -hmm. And I now have gussets for uh, other shit, <laughs> for other parts of the front end. Okay, so what I did with the rails that I got, I got five by three quarter inch. I wanted something a little bit skinnier as a uh, wall thickness, but they didn't have anything. And I wanted something as close to the Bronco frame as possible. So the Bronco's, I think five and a half by three. So this is five by three, five inches by three inches. So I went with this. Uh, only thing is five inches comes up to like here so that's why I made this indentation and I've cut it into both of them uh, but what I still need to do is I need to cut a little wall out because they still hit the lower part of, uh, of these still hit so it's more or less just the arms here. So what I can do is I can go bloop, bloop, like that. So that's what I'll do. So that's what I'll do now. Oh, man. All right. Let me get the other one done. Well, I've uh, I've taken my my two uh, five foot five by three inch quarter inch walled pieces of metal, and I've made room for the upper control arm. They were hitting, uh, like I'd said in a previous clip, and. Uh, I got this one to fit, but what I'm going to do after I take a little break is I need to cut my my welds that I made on this brace to keep everything where it needed to be. And I'm actually going to slide this front uh, a foot, or maybe a little bit more than a foot. 
So what I was thinking about was uh, the end result of what this truck's going to look like. And at first, when I braced everything, I was going to build the truck with the 318 bolting in the stock location as it did on the front end of the LeBaron when the LeBaron was together. And that would make the motor in between the wheels and the radiator and headlights in front of the front wheels. Now, that look, I'm not a big fan of it. It works with some bodies and different years and stuff like that. But um, I was thinking long and hard about this and if nobody knows exactly what a Bronco 2 is, I was afraid that I would have this at a car show or somebody would see it and they would think that basically I just took the front fenders, the hood, the bumper, the grill and everything off the front of a truck and was just running it like that. And I don't want people to think that. I want people to know that I put a lot of time and effort into making this what it is. So by putting that up further, the motor's going to be behind the wheels, so is the radiator and so are the lights and it'll give it that that look that I I want. So I'm I'm happy about that. I mean, right now I'm at a point to where I could go either way, but I'm definitely going to go go uh I'm going to go with the longer front end. Plus I would like some room between the wheels and the body and right now it's uh it's basically almost it's actually is less than a foot from the front firewall to the tire. So if you think about that in perspective, it won't look as drastic as what I'm describing, but it'll still uh, satisfy what I want it to look like. But I've already realized that I'm going to have to unbolt the power steering pump or the power steering, uh, uh, the, the thing the power steering, I'm going to have to unbolt that to slide my other piece of metal in. And then, uh, I'll show you what I did. I'll take a break from my brake, I guess. So after, after I get everything bolted or the holes lined up and all where this, these pieces are going to mount in this front end, I need to figure out the angle at which this is going to drop. I'm going to have to cut maybe like a pie and then this piece is going to go down which is then going to attach to the other side of this rail and on this side it's going to be like that and then I got to reinforce everything but basically to find that I know that this front end is going to be level so level would be zero on this uh, angle finder that I got but basically I'll put this on here I know this chassis is level because I did all that the other day but the, the chassis, the end of it it kind of goes up and that's a 15 degree angle so basically before I cut this what I'll do is I'll make sure this is level well I'll probably do the cut make sure this is level and then I will bend the part after the cut and bend it until I get that 15 degree angle then I'll weld it up and it'll it'll flow nicely with the rest of this frame but before I do all that, I gotta get this front squared away. I gotta undo that power steering pump or the power steering. All right, gonna undo the power steering, and hopefully I can just uh, swing it. I don't want to undo the the joint there for the steering. I'm just gonna swing it out and uh, then slide that other piece of metal in there. That's the right size, right? Too big. Let's see, this is a 21. I probably need a 20 or a 19. There is no 20. It goes right to 19, so it's probably a 19. Got a suspicion. It's most likely a 19. <clears throat> oh, that's good. As you can see, I have this extension on my wrench if I can pull it off. Anyway, it's a bicycle seat post. I like to keep it on my wrenches because it's just more leverage. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the welds that I made for this brace because everything's going that way more so 
Gonna undo it there. I'll probably get another piece of this, put it on top of this to extend this whole whole piece here. So uh, let me do that right now. Harbor Freight has these uh, kick-ass safety goggles for eight dollars. They got vents and stuff like that. The reason I love these is because they go over my glasses. I have no problems wearing glasses with these on. And because I'm wearing glasses, usually when I wear a mask or or something else, they tend to fog. If there's any moisture, they'll fog. But these these basically breathe on their own. So any moisture, it won't really be a problem. Unless they're saturated with water, they won't be a problem. So-called spot weld. I put a little bit more weld on that than I should have, but I really didn't want anything to go anywhere, so then I thought I made up my mind. just got this centered again and uh, I'm gonna put the metal on there see where I need to make my bends and then I'll brace it once I know that this is where it needs to be and then I'll go on from there meanwhile I'm gonna charge my camera I got it this time. Alright, I like that better. Alright, so I got those pieces cut, uh, I bent where they need to come down, the drop, I just tack welded it, if, uh, if I notice anything off or whatever when I go to bolt them or whatever, I'll just cut the tack welds, but uh, I'm not going to weld anything yet, but so far so good.